What's going on guys, it's your boy Ethan, back with another poker vlog review. Hope you're all having a great day. Um, back here on campus now, I'm back at school, and I'm going to go over the last session that I just played at Twin River. Um, back at UMass, so I'm on campus right now, so me going to the casino and playing some poker might be a little limited, but I think moving forward, um, I'm probably going to go here and there, make a couple of videos in the future, but maybe might start posting some like online um, poker videos, going over some hands, stuff like that. So let me know if you guys want to see that. That's going to be something new that I'll add to the channel so I can continually post on this channel so you guys have some sort of content to keep uh, keep up with. But um, that's the reason why things will probably change a little bit because I am about an hour and a half away from the closest casino because I'm in uh, Amherst, Massachusetts, if you guys know where that is. But anyways, um, here with another video, and I guess we'll start getting into the hands and see how this session went because as you can tell from the title, it didn't go too hot. First interesting hand that we have of the session, I am in middle position. We get two limpers to me. I look down at pocket queens. So with two limpers, decent hand, I'll bet $15. Um, I get one call from the cutoff. The big blind then calls as well, and everyone else folds. So we're three ways to the flop. Flop comes jack, seven, four, rainbow. Relatively dry board. Um, so the big blind, first to act, he checks. Action onto me, I'll throw out a bet of $25 just to see what happens. Um, the cutoff then folds, and the big, big blind then raises to $95. Um, at this point, I think, um, I'll be honest with you, I have no idea what he would be betting with, but I thought with 95 with queens with an overpair, um, I should be looking pretty good. So with only about 150 behind, I decide to shove all in. Um... I figured, you know, I can call, but I feel like I'm ahead right now, so I'll I'll put money in the river and just shove it all in while I'm ahead. And I shove with 150 behind, so about 65, 55 more to call for him. Uh, and he snap calls pretty quickly there. The turn comes a 10 diamonds. The river is an ace, and I flip over my queens. He flips over his set of sevens, and I lose that one. Um... So that happened there. So I mean, I'll be honest with you. He he raised me pretty pretty big on the uh, on the flop there. When I bet twenty five, he he raises to ninety five. I figured that it didn't look like it was for value to be honest, because I because around the table I knew that I was probably one of the weaker players, and I thought he was just going to be targeting me and wanting me to fold. But um, that time wasn't bluffing with a large raise. So that ends up being a loser with queens there. Next hand comes with me in the big blind, and I look down at pocket eights. Um, so the undergun plus two um, th leads out for $15, putting him on a pretty strong range at that point. Um, then we get two callers around the table, then I make the call. So the flop comes 972 with two hearts. Um, I don't have a heart, but it's relatively pretty good board for a middle pocket pair. Especially comparing to the big blind, he sh it sh really shouldn't have hit his range at all, to be honest. Um, so I'm first to act. I'll check. Then the onion plus two bets twenty five dollars. Normal continuation bet, I think. Um, I think he's a, the pre flop aggressor. He has to continue at least. Um, I don't think that he has anything. So um, one person calls, another person folds, and I decide to make the call with my second pair, I guess. And also a backdoor straight draw that this probably doesn't really help out that much. But um, then we're off to a turn three ways. Turn comes a five of spades. So interesting card where it helps out my range compared to the big blinds. I don't even know what the other guy would be calling with. But um, once again, I check. And the onion plus two continues for $55. The other person folds. And I have a decision to make here. Um, with you know, the pot being relatively big, I only have $75 left, and he bet 55 So it's either I have to pretty much fold or go all in here. Um, given the fact that he raised pre-flop, or he re-raised under the gun plus two for $15, I'm putting him on, you know, some sort of premium holding um, for a one two game. That's usually what they would have. And I don't put him on a flush draw because he, he bet the, t the flop, um, so I'm not, I would put him on maybe, I don't know, I, I'd put him on maybe high pocket pairs, but that's the only thing that would beat me at this point. Um, but I don't think he has anything given his bet so far. So 
given that, given him thinking, I think he has a premium holding, and I don't think he has a high pocket pair, or aces, queens, sevens, or aces, queens, jacks, kings, anything like that, I decided to shove and put it all in because I think I should have him beat at this point. Um, so then he quickly calls with only, you know, I mean, that was only a $15, a $20 extra on top. So I go all in. He makes the call pretty quickly. The river is a jack of diamonds, so the flush draw doesn't come in. And I show my eights thinking I should be good, and he shows ace jack of hearts. Um, so I lose that one. I get rivered. It's unfortunate. Looking back on it, he had his outs. Looking at how he played his hand, it kind of made sense. I did put him on the right hand, more or less. Didn't know he was on the flush draw, but I knew he had two over cards, and he shouldn't have had anything at, up until this point. So got me on the river, but that's what happens. So right now at this point, the session isn't going too hot for me. I lost two all-ins, so I'm pretty much right now at this point, I'm stuck about 400. Um, lost two $200 buy-ins, and I bought in for another $100 just to say, screw it, let's just continue playing because I've only been sitting down at the table for like an hour and a half. Um, and then the next two hands come super annoying where um, next hand I get pocket tens, I'm under the gun, I throw it about a $10, and it folds around. So that doesn't help a ton there because every time I, anytime I got like a decent card or decent, um, decent hand to play with, I just get shut out and I don't get, I don't get paid off of it. Next playable hand, I get ace king offsuit. I'm on the button. Um, there are three limps around. With three limps, I make it fifteen dollars and no one calls. So I just take down another six dollar pot or whatever it was with ace king that I don't get paid off again. Um, no one wants to play with me for some reason. Um, so that's kind of how the session's been going so far. But then a couple hands later, an orbit later or two. Um, I am in the under the gun position with king queen off. Um, at this point, I only have like a sixty-five dollar stack because the cards I have been playing with have been trashed, and I lose some dollars here and there due to like preflop raises and stuff, and I don't connect on the on the flop. But right now, I have a sixty-five dollar stack in front of me with king queen off. I'm under the gun. I decide to make it eight dollars just for the hell of it, and I get three callers. Finally, someone wants to play with me, right? It's supposed to be a good thing. Um, the flop comes six, queen, eight, rainbow. Um, so flop top pair, um, or relatively dry board. I'll bet a pot size bet of $25, and one person makes the call. Um, the turn comes a nine. So pretty much shouldn't really change anything. I should still be ahead with top pair. Maybe he picked up a nine along the way with the turn, but... I decide to check, try to set a trap because I only have like 40 behind or something like that. I really, I only have like $35 behind, something like that. So I check, he puts me all in, he makes a bet of like $40 or so. Of course, I have to make the call with top pair. Um, the river ends up being a brick. Then he flips over 10-7 to make the straight. And I lose that one. So uh, I walk away being a loser. Um, which is unfortunate, kind of was on tilt, but kind of was just running pretty bad there. I also noticed that um, I mean, the, this last hand, the guy that I lost to, he was talking about me on the other side of the table the entire session, the entire time I was playing. He was talking about my plays, he was talking about my hands, so he was definitely targeting me, and I just, you know, just, just couldn't, couldn't win on this one for some reason. But anyways, um, had a relatively bad session, and I guess I'll just send it off to the recap of how I felt after all this happened. <sighs> so I just got back in my car. Um, terrible, shitty, rainy day out too. But um, yeah, this was a session to forget. Ran bad, played against players that were better than me, and just uh, just wasn't a good day. So I played for two hours, I was in for 500, and I left with zero. So uh, that's an hourly rate of minus 250 an hour this session. Um, that was really quick, quick enter, quick exit. Um, yeah, so hopefully uh, we'll just, uh, you know, it's part of the game, you know? Ran into some bad, bad runouts, I guess. 50-50 battles and lost the 50-50 battles. So um, yeah, on to the next session, I guess. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you want me to make more. I probably will. I'll probably play another session later. But uh, yeah, leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see. I'll see you guys later in the next video. Hopefully, it'll go 
a lot better than this one. Peace.